Hello, this is Chris Covey of the League of Women Voters of Portland. You are watching the Video Voters Guide. In conjunction with Metro East Community Media, we are having uh, talks here with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Mary Paveto, um, who is running for Metro Councilor from District 5, which is primarily the North Portland area. Welcome, Mary, and please tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for the Metro Council. Thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to the League of Women Voters. I am running for Metro Council because I've spent 10 years working on air quality and environmental issues. And while I'm really proud of the work that we've done and the progress that we've made, I, I don't believe that we can solve these problems with the urgency that I think that they deserve. Um, at the state and and uh, the, even the federal level, certainly, without elected local elected leaders really uh, prioritizing and and bringing the leadership we need to make bold action on the environment. I the you know the climate crisis was the original crisis that drove me to do the work that I've done for ten years, as well as um, to to run for this office. And now this new crisis is just showing us how interconnected all of these issues really are. We're seeing higher rates of infection from the uh, coronavirus in places where there are high levels of air pollution. And we just, we, we really need to be um, taking urgent and courageous action in the face of these situations. Mary, you talk about a crisis here, and it truly is one. These are tumultuous times. What challenges to the effective and efficient operation of our metropolitan government will result from the pandemic, and how do you propose to meet those challenges if you were elected to the council? I think this is the most urgent opportunity that Metro has in front of it is how interconnected it is with the whole experience of the Portland Metro economy. Um, Metro's in the same service business and community gathering business of so many of the employers that have had to make really significant cuts and Metro was not spared from these. It runs the convention center, it runs the zoo, it runs all the performing arts centers and the expo center among others. So it was in the same hard position a couple of weeks ago to lay off 40% of its workforce. And unfortunately that workforce um, was disproportionately uh, lower income, lower wage positions and people of color. So Metro has, is going to have a huge opportunity, I think, to lead as a key employer in the region with how we bring this back. What's on the other side of this? How do we really take care of and build the economy from the workforce up and take care of the, the labor force first and protect in this moment um, the workers that have also are still at Metro that are considered essential workers, but are they protected from to be doing their jobs while they're doing their jobs? And I think it's really key that Metro um, has this opportunity to really lead as an example and a model for best practices of taking care of workers through this crisis. Metro is in the process of drafting uh, a regional transportation measure. What expectations do you have that the planned expenditures will achieve the state and regional goals for reducing greenhouse gas emissions? I love this question because a few months ago when I decided to run, this was the driving motivation for me to run. I've worked on air quality and climate for 10 years and transportation in our region is the single biggest contributor to um, greenhouse gas, uh, air quality problems, um, and carbon. So a huge $4 billion investment in a transportation package in the region has the opportunity to be a huge part of the solution and, and our ability to take urgent action on this problem of climate and decarbonization. I have been frustrated though that the transportation package to date isn't delivering on these measurements. In fact, Metro's own calculations show very insignificant carbon reductions. And it's, I think that there are a couple key elements that could be added to the transportation package to really make sure that it delivers on the urgent um, needs of this moment in our climate crisis. And that would be to ensure 
that every single investment has a decarbonization goal. So for example, I, one of the big places that I see opportunity is TriMet. TriMet will, will be the recipient of significant amount of funding from this transportation package. But TriMet needs to become a, a, a significant player and partner in the idea that our congestion and our carbon emissions is related to the fact that we have too many cars on the road, too many people driving currently, and our population projections show that we're going to have way too many people driving in the future. So congestion reduction really has to be first and foremost about how do we get people out of their cars and onto public transportation or other options. And TriMet has, um, while well, we're seeing triple digit population growth projections, TriMet's ridership projection for the next 10 years is only 2%. And I don't think that's acceptable. We cannot meet our carbon decarbonization goals if we aren't giving people a viable option to not use their car, which is the single biggest contributor to the carbon problem. So TriMet needs to have every single project have a ridership growth element um, or uh, criteria attached to it that they are held responsible to. And so I think when you look at something like the huge investment in the Southwest Corridor, which is a big TriMet project that's, that's part of the um, transportation package, how many new riders, how many people not just moving from a bus to light rail, but how many new riders are going to get off that freeway and take the Southwest Corridor light rail? Right now, it's highly unlikely. I mean, I think the fact that they aren't connecting the two biggest sources of commuter traffic in that region, in that Southwest Corridor, which is um, PCC, the community college, and OHSU, means they're not going to move folks out of their cars who are using that for their commute. So how do we make sure that TriMet is finding out what people need and making sure that increasing the ridership um, and increasing the accessibility, making sure service is frequent enough, making sure you know it's safe to use TriMet and making sure that it gets people to where they need to go within a reasonable amount of time. Those would be really key components that I think could improve the decarbonization of the transportation package. Other low hanging fruit, the youth pass. That should be you know, offered widely across the whole TriMet region to all high school, but also to those um, community college students, to the pu public university students. We need to extend the, the application of the youth pass. It's really low hanging fruit to move people who don't need to be into cars um, onto our public transportation system. Thank you very much, Mary. I appreciate your taking the time to give us your thoughts. This has been the Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19. Be sure to inform yourself as to the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote. Thank you very much for watching.